welcome to this uh, new episode of unleashed we continue talking about the importance of having wider interests in this episode we will focus more on our growing years the influences we have the limitations we face the academic demands the fear of our own careers this episode we continue to reflect with debu we continue to reflect with mahender samil rashmi on how we shape from childhood a more wider interest how perhaps parents from different backgrounds need to probably be mentored to mentor their children better how academic institutes are reshaping themselves and what are the good examples of how one balances both pursuits wider interest as well as academic interest and we already have established in the earlier episodes how this is very important for you to be an all-rounded personality and how being an all-rounded personality how it adds and contributes to your professional life many of us grew up being influenced by parents neighbors friends of parents some seniors at school some teachers and other mentors and we depended on them to make decisions for us a lot of our decisions were made to ensure that we have a stable and assured careers and we ended up doing academic pursuits perhaps for which we never developed any passion here are my reflections with debu around this topic i have been always curious about what kind of interest and the small town piece that i and there's a friend who or i know a lot of people from jamshedpur in mm-hmm. jharkhand and he he described it very interestingly he said that when you grow up in a place like jamshedpur you constantly strive for escape velocity you have to get out of there you have to get out and progress from that anxious, ecosystem huh? of jamshedpur and that escape velocity becomes the you can call it the fire in the belly or imagination or aspiration ambition you can give it any term but the need to progress from where you are creates different interests in individuals so some of them would pursue let's say engineering as a path but then realize that they really don't enjoy it the other question that i have asked most leaders that i have worked with and i do this in a workshop setting i asked them saying that how many of you uh, pursued your uh, academics because you wanted to do it versus you pursued that path in academics because your parents said that it would be better for you to do majority i would say 80 to 85% is because of parental pressure mm. i pursued this particular academic mm. path how many of you are in jobs because of your academic qualifications again 90 95% now the moment you see the correlation between this the academic path that you choose is not necessarily your first choice yeah. you land up because of passion for it mm. of the social norms or family influence and then you are in jobs because of the academic qualification so that got me thinking since that so the life the lives we lead could have been radically different if Absolutely. we had the freedom to choose early in our life and that's a story of every individual so when you look at satisfaction work satisfaction or engagement in the corporate world the reason it is low is because not everybody is in the vocation that they are extremely passionate about mm-hmm. some discover it while pursuing what they accidentally landed up in yeah and some make the shifts some make the moves you would remember one of our colleagues in anderson who were, who had done law but he came into consulting so he wanted and he gave up a very significant seniority in the law firm yeah to start as a consultant in consulting because that was his passion yeah maybe he did law because somebody told him that it would be a good so i, I think world over this influence of what we see around us on what we choose as pathways is very high it's a global phenomena and that's why we are more influenced rather than engaged with what we really enjoy so debu talked about how your careers perhaps were influenced by somebody else 
and you pursued those academics as influenced by somebody else and perhaps never developed any kind of a deep passion for it and ended up working on careers which were dependent on the academics you pursued into other professional career somil talks about how parents are the main mentors of children and i think parents biggest concern is to ensure that the child has a stable and a fruitful career with so much competition with so many competitive exams the child has to go through parents believe that wider interest will dilute the focus although the there is at least a stated examples of some of the corporates are now looking for wider personality somil talks about that is very limited to very few examples and therefore i think the parents are not really convinced that the wider personal the wider pursuits at least in india will get the children a better putting into the professional career i have seen lot of parents like almost tiger moms and all those things really pushing children to study and drop everything and i think these are the children when they go come to like what you said when they come to iit they don't know who they are yeah. they are all struggling mm-hmm. or any other places i'm just saying i think <laughs> some of these things also are finally unfortunately for all the talk the job market is not valuing these enough mm. you mentioned a global ceo mm. i think the question to ask is when their teams are actually interviewing mm. if the word gets out that companies today you know infosys other companies today are valuing people who have a wider exposure these mom tiger moms will make them get a wider exposure it which is true the answer i told you i talked to mahender he was saying in his lot of startups are asking for this yes startups are asking so therefore he says only it's 40% only people we are looking at academics especially in his undergrad schools where he is taking and then the rest of the people they were looking at are they good videographers are they good sports people are the wider personalities and that's what most of the startups want people with that kind of intuition yeah. and you know that kind of ability to yeah but to your point of a broad enough acceptance of this concept the mainstream has to value it i think what has not happened adequately for all the talk honestly by all the corporate leaders yeah their hiring process has not changed to value anything which is slightly subjective slightly fuzzy mm. and therefore out of 10 resumes you straight away go for people of 95% plus and who can crack their entrance exam or whatever so, it is so if that's the people who are getting jobs what do you expect my mom, mom my mom to do rashmi talks about how as a growing child how during her school days she had pursued many wider interests along with her academic focus and how these interests in her later part of career started contributing to her to being an effective professional she also shares why is it important for parents to ensure that the child gets much wider exposure in his or her growing years so i as a child i was in school and even till college i was a good athlete and i still have my medals from school and college and i was a participant in all other kinds of events that used to happen in school so whether it was a dance performance for the annual day or for the independence day whether it was declamation contest whether it was debate competitions poetry recitation whatever it was i was part of that and i used to win quite a few of them as well and i firmly believe that maybe i did not realize it at that point in time maybe in my initial career years i did not get any benefit from the grooming i'd had as an all rounder and i'll mm-hmm. use the word all rounder though i wasn't the top or like the best in each of them sense but i was good at each one of them absolutely so i would call myself as an all rounder i did not get the benefit of that in the initial years it's only because i never leveraged them it's only when i realized that i have it in me to be able to leverage some of those things that i have learned as a child whatever qualities there were whether it was public speaking whether it was running whatever be it and i started leveraging on it and started using it is when i realized the power of the base that i had built for myself as a child mm-hmm. okay so when people talk about today that uh, all round development is good and is required for kids i 
totally believe in that mm-hmm. the way you go around getting your kids to be an all rounder i don't agree with some of the methods yeah. uh, but yes i believe that your child should have an exposure to each and every of these activities correct i'm 100% sure the practice that was given to me as a student mm-hmm. when i was being put up on the stage for declamation contests and poetry recitation some of that has stayed with me mm. maybe it's come out much later in the years Absolutely. that's fine Absolutely. but that grooming has stayed with me and that's what's helped me rashmi has talked about in her professional life how she's pursuing multiple interests and balancing there is a there are some amount of sacrifices one has to make if one has to develop wider skills and pursue wider interests whether it is music whether it is sports shamil talks about how probably some amount of sacrifices have to be done so discipline is central to it discipline is central to having wider interests yet at the same time one has to have fun where i am coming from is this also develops that detailed ability like when i grew up the detailed ability to work on something with a like you know to get to perfection like you said certain yes. percentages are going into the having fun is one part but then when you come into making it perfection it starts becoming a stress and this is where i think if you are doing that and then balancing your academic pursuits with that very few people probably manage it and many parents probably won't allow even if you are so talented they might not allow you to yeah and i think as you age you probably whereas in a music probably you can catch up even after later and still do it but i'm where i'm trying to say that where do you have this trade offs somebody is coming excellent here and the chances in a sports are not so high somebody is becoming an excellent in music or dance or whatever it is then there are this competitive needs like today i think the cutthroat competition and you alluded to all this schools the iit preparation schools or the medical school preparation schools where i think children at, as early as eighth standards drop out and start pursuing them but there may be many of them who have the deep talent how does one balance this so that's a great question let me give a personal example i got selected for badminton for maharashtra i grew up in mumbai Mm-hmm. and i figured that when i was i don't think i was as good to make a career in badminton at that time mm-hmm. but also i figured ki usne paisa nahi banne wala hai mm-hmm. that to be fair i offered if you are serious about it we'll find you to support you on sport yeah. then i got into iit thinking i am the cool dude around who got badminton at a certain level and iit also i am the coolest dude around mm-hmm. i couldn't get into the iit bombay badminton mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. which means there were at least six mm-hmm. there were at least six more people who were six was a team mm-hmm. who were better and that was that day and i thought about only when i started the disport part was a reminder that it is possible to balance mm. people who say it's not possible to balance are lying because they also want to watch a movie they also want to hang out with friends and also so you can't have multiple stuff going on and be excellent in all you you so that the, the whole notion of discipline and do you want it bad enough there some sacrifices have to be made on some of the leisure or pleasures and then exactly. you can balance between these two So the way to think about it is you can go deep in one, then you have to sacrifice something else, hmm. or else be okay. And which is what I call I took after ninth standard. I said I'll play multiple sports because I am not going to play professionally at all. So I'll be reasonably good at multiple sports. Hmm. So in my inter hostel, I used to be in all the teams partly because I could just run the whole ninety minutes without hmm. getting tired. Hmm. And I had a very fundamental understanding of hockey and football and volleyball and basketball because I just went played those sports. Yeah. Because of which my social circles are bigger. Hmm. 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 My social circles in campus is very big because I would know all the team members of multiple hostels that you played with. Yeah. So my point is that you can go deep and balance, hmm. or, or say, say wide hmm. and go deep enough for you to just know enough. Mm. and today with google it's a 30 second thing to if you if you commit half an hour and i'm telling you you'll be in the 97th percentile of any topic today what we are essentially saying that people when they participate into wider pursuits they develop a passion for thing increasingly the passion for thing is improving their approach to even academics and not just learn it like a another thing to remember and uh, use it for passing an exam modern life professional life always required you to apply this but your schools never taught it it's very refreshing to hear mahender is talking about this 
about how children in certain of the uh, boards are now made to learn enjoy understand the application and therefore i think the ability to probably use it in later in life and also build deeper interest into those subjects is much much better i think very interesting is the stability is what i think we always as a middle class looked at and therefore they looked at like even your cousin you talked about who went to ios he is looking for a stable job Correct. and he's got skills maybe he's skilled more than to do more than that but Correct. i think it's comfortable have a steady job is what i think a lot of people still pursue that kind of a yeah a lot of people are risk averse discover and i think like you said upper middle class and higher more more wealthier people are willing to take risks explore Correct. more things they can also afford to fail and i think this they can always come back and do and therefore i think there is this we have built confidence in this other set of people Correct. that their children full potential is not getting blossomed by only mm-hmm. having academic pursuits but having this wider pursuits may make them better candidates for having better careers in the future actually learning better do you see learning is better do you see learning is better when people have wider interests of course definitely see most of these coaching centers may understand my understanding is even the teachers when we interview when we are hiring teachers when we interview them they say that okay i am a math teacher then i say okay what do you teach or can you so then they start writing one formula of trigonometry and then they start going on then when i ask where do you apply why do you have to learn trigonometry how is it useful in my real life even teachers are not able to answer absolutely because they have been brought up in a system like that system like that so, yeah whereas a person who is logically thinking i am sure in business day to day decisions that is what is required you should start questioning everything why i am doing what i am doing yeah if that is not happening and thankfully because of this new age curriculums like ib and uh, cambridge to a large extent i would say to the 90 95% students cannot mug up or do anything mm. unless you understand the concept mm. you will not be able to answer the paper yeah 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 because uh, in a math paper they could have a problem which is they will never give you an equation to solve this equation they will say that this is a life problem if somebody is traveling from here to there event in a question first of all the students should understand is it a geometry is it an algebra what is it some questions will you have to use all the concepts in that one problem maybe geometry some, to some extent and then algebra and things like that and then they don't want you to mug the formulas they give you the formula and say use this formula but solve this thing so this at least children who are going to international schools they are of less pressure because they don't have the pressure of mugging and remembering if they go to the and then learning has to happen every day because they cannot do anything in the last minute and so conceptually if they are not strong they cannot answer so this is changing to a large extent but for a layer it is definitely happening i remember i was once interviewing uh, one some candidate for my one of my companies at one of the iims and this person had a very good academic background good this person had a very good track record he worked for a very large company he was part of their automotive division he was working as a maintenance engineer in their automotive division that's how he started his career then he was part of that groups sap roll out so therefore he was very much involved in building using technology for the groups management and then he pursued a mba course at one of the best schools and we were considering his candidature for our company in my interview i asked him how all this how like his learning has now been enhanced with the business school and this person comes back saying that he's he throws at me certain concepts that he's learned uh, IRR or he's learned return on equity etc like he gave me some financial jargon he has learned during the mba school and that he has now a better understanding of financial jargon so i told him i will send him back to the automotive industry company he had worked with before and now he'll become the maintenance head and his factory is running to full capacity and uh, his general manager will call him saying that they have to take an institutional order he how he as a maintenance head would now create capacity these are real life problems so when we learn concepts this is the kind of situations in which these concepts are put to use 
but unfortunately this young professional could only talk about the terminology he knows around these things like breakdown maintenance or preventive maintenance and those kind of terms but he wasn't able to put his mind around how he will use maintenance to create capacity so i think mahender talk about applied knowledge uh, mahender talk about applying this right from young age would bring about one huge change in the way students will grow up and i think this is also very important for india to become more innovation and innovative centers for the world samil so talks about how children having wider pursuits like sports are able to have better performance in the classroom are showing better attendance are showing better discipline in, and it is therefore helping their academic pursuits one of the biggest concerns lot of parents have is this is a extra curricular it's never been curricular and how did they by taking embracing sport learning through having fun through sports are they going back more cheerful for the other classes and other yeah yeah we have data that shows improved attendance when we have our classes going mm. anecdotal and uh, statistical data yeah, where yeah. attendance has spiked that's a best example of kids boarding with their feet mm. we have pay, schools talking about how their focus and discipline in the classroom is improved because of our program outside the classroom wow. a lot of this stuff people know it mm. just sometimes they're not experienced it mm. one extra experience some others need data so others others want maybe because they're not a decision maker they do convince somebody else mm. they want to see. <laughs> mm. i think there has been improvement on uh, personality improvement in fitness improvement in engagement improvement in the interest in wi- wi- wider sport as well in watching in going parents have been pulled out because my kids saying you should also play so i think we we touch would fortunate that i think from the kid upwards mm. we're able to rekindle joy of play wow. and hopefully they stay playing for life and many of them have gone into deeper learning what percentage go into deeper learning more specialized way so very I mean, typically 10% would go into after school program 10 to 15% mm. uh, another few percent will then go into even deeper and go all the way ahead mm-hmm. but it's like saying you take math or science only some of us go for a extra after school exactly exactly most yeah. people just do what is how we are that we want all kids to just fall in love with play and sport we are not a starting point is not to produce champions the mm. metric is that kids want to kids play and get it this is a part of development this is a part of complete education not stand alone separate i think i moved it up from extra curriculars an integral part of learning and that's a big change yeah. so mil retreat what mahendra talks about mahendra talks about how we build passion and how that passion and understanding the context in which we are learning will help you in the long run whereas samil brings that while in the school itself having this wider pursuits are immediately helping them to have better attendance and better performance in the classroom how should a child discover where her interests lie mahender shares his experiences of exposing his child to various interests not putting any pressure to excel at anything and helping the child to discover her sweet spot so i think the fundamental thing is that we should first let children to explore for some time and uh, see what they are more passionate about so if i take my own example i put my child in everything i put her in golf she had a very good swing and we thought okay she can take this up professionally after a year or something she lost interest she said i am not going to do golf anymore we said fine then her mother put her in violin she because her mother says go to violin class every day she goes but she has no passion in violin so she was not in sports she was not in this my wife was getting worried she is neither doing that she is not doing this what do we, we need to push her to do something i said no let her enjoy after a while we realized that okay let her enjoy let she will find what she likes to so we've seen she picked up languages and she's got a flair for languages wow and then on when she's in 7th 8th grade by watching korean movies and movie, this thing and then finding her own apps and things like that she picked up korean language to the extent that she understands and she can respond to a basic thing when she's 7th grade 8th grade oh wow huh. so then we said okay you pursue french because then french she has done very well she's top the school so it came out so we need to i think allow the children to explore and not 
do force upon them what we couldn't do in our life we should make it through our so that is usually the common thing so again like i said it's easier said than a lot of it is still the mindset is still there yeah it will take i think is more time and people should be more confident that okay we can survive in this world it just need not be this and i think it's not happening I think it's a brilliant way this episode has progressed. We started with Debu sharing experiences of how many of his friends from his town went into pursuing academics in which they didn't have interest and therefore ended up in careers which they didn't have an interest but were just living mechanically. To Mahendra sharing how he's allowing his child to explore and discover her full potential. So we see the full spectrum where somebody else is making decisions to how the child can make decisions and i think we allow the child to make decisions the children will blossom far more better this episode covered the need for children at academic stage to have wider interest how that can be balanced how that has contributed to professional life later how parents need to get better exposure and how the academics are themselves putting new curriculums to ensure the children get wider interest hope that this changes in academics will actually help the children to grow into much all-rounded professionals and better leaders in the future